Hi, Dr. P here to talk about three kinds of gamers because I like to try to categorize things in games even though most people don't fall neatly into one category or another because it helps you think about why people like what they want or don't like what they want and that's important if you're a game designer. Well in this case we have game contenders, game surfers, and game bathers. And the usual caveats these are really designed for listening rather than viewing, wordy slides for people who, for whom English is not their first language, and so forth. So I'm suggesting you can look at gamers in three groups. Game contenders, which I usually originally called players, but that's confusing. Game surfers and game bathers. The same person can have different attitudes with different kinds of games. For example, Someone may be a contender with board games, but a surfer with RPGs. Well, what are game contenders? They are people who want control. Sometimes they, they're called serious gamers. They want something, this particular thing, to happen in a game. They want their choices to matter. They're interested in strong player agency. They want to play the game for the game's sake or for game playing's sake not just to kill time, not just to be with other people. They want to play that particular game. Now they're not necessarily focused on winning, but they're certainly focused on success and mastery of the game. Playing the game must be worth their time. The play's the thing. They see games as intellectual entities worthy of attention and study. Now, even people who might appear to be casual gamers can have this attitude. I recall one college-aged woman who came to a game club and otherwise didn't play games a whole lot except for D&D &D, as someone who had her limits. For example, she didn't want to play games where she had a lot of pieces to control. But whenever she played a game, she really put her mind to it. She was serious about it. At that point, she was a game contender. Game surfers, on the other hand, are people who want to explore games, play each game a few times, and then move on. They're a little like water surfers moving on to the next wave, or even better, like web surfers flitting from one website to the next. They're not so concerned about controlling what happens. Perhaps they would say, what happens next, rather than, I want this to happen. But they do want to figure out how the game works and figure out what good strategies are. David J. Mortimer described these as, they go where the waves take them, but with some small course correction choices. So this reminds me of players who want to play one game after another, but none longer than an hour. Not all of the surfers are limited to an hour, but some of them will be. Now when I want to see what happens next, I watch a game rather than play it. I can pay more attention to the game overall. I can talk with people who have played it to hear what their take is. But surfers prefer to play while looking for what happens next, especially in video games where, after all, you cannot lose, at least single-player video games. Now what about game bathers? Well, I compare them to sound bathers. Some people like to have music playing in the background all the time, though they aren't very particular about which mu music is playing. They like many genres. I call most of these people sound bathers. Well, gamers of this type are game bathers. Game bathers want experiences. They don't really care if their choices matter. So, player agency? Meh. Frequently their objectives are social rather than game oriented. They play because that's what other people are doing. But when they play, they're experience bathers and sometimes excitement bathers. They don't care greatly about which game they're playing as long as they play a game with other people and then not worrying much about winning. This attitude is especially common in video gamers, I think. Keep in mind now, most video games are designed to be played once and beaten, not to be played again. Like sound bathers, game bathers are more interested in newness than in depth. Now, I can listen to the same great song repeatedly for an hour, and I can play the same outstanding game over and over again. Some people can't do that. 
On the other hand, I often wonder why anyone cares if they can store 10,000 songs on their MP3 player, because at that point the person is sound bathing rather than listening to favorite outstanding music. And the people who play dozens and dozens of games are game bathing. They're not my kind of gamer, I guess you would say. So to me, they lack taste. People who like everything or will try anything in games or other fields have no taste. Now a difference between sound bathers and game bathers is listening to music, music is largely passive and games require activity. But there are plenty of easy short games available nowadays that give you something to do, especially video games. Keep in mind with most video games you're always doing something. That's what video games are about. They're more about doing than thinking. How would these different groups react to the idea of favorite games? Well, contenders are likely to have favorite games, especially lifestyle gamers. Lifestyle gamers are people who essentially play one game and it's their hobby, whether it's Magic the Gathering or Bridge or Diplomacy or Dungeons and Dragons or something else. Surfers especially who want to explore new games aren't likely to have favorite games. Bathers may have a favorite, but it's likely to be the game they're currently playing, especially if it's video. But that favorite changes rapidly. Now the cult of the new, which pervades American culture, is expressed in surfers especially, and also in bathers, and not in contenders. Surfers and bathers have a lot more in common with each other than they do with the players, the, the contenders. In fact, Originally, I had them combined in one group and decided it made more sense to separate them. Short games are more important for surfers and bathers than for contenders. What about strategies in games? Contenders want deep games, games with depth, not variety. There's an element of mastery involved. Games for surfers need to be transparent. That is, the strategies need to be pretty obvious so that after one play, the surfer thinks he or she knows a good method for winning and they prove that out if they play a second or third time and then they move on to the next game. Bathers don't particularly care about winning but still prefer games with clarity and simplicity. The bathers are closest of these three groups to party gamers. So what about video games? Well many people play single player video games as much to kill time as for any other reason, especially mobile games or time killers. People don't often want to admit they're killing time when they play games, even when they are clearly doing just that. Obviously, which group you design for, and maybe you can design for two out of the three, will strongly influence your design. Thanks for listening.